Before the formation of the Draconis Combine, chaos reigned as man drifted aimlessly among the stars. It took the inspired hand of Shiro Kurita, first lord and citizen, to forge a dynamic and noble path from which we still derive strength and to which we must still pledge obeisance. Draconis Combine was forged from the ashes of conflict. The Outer Reach's rebellion had ended just 32 years before a man named Shiro Kurita was born onto the colony world called New Samarkand. It was a crowded and prosperous planet, and Shiro benefited from a high-quality education and military training. He also grew up surrounded by peers and role models that followed 17th century Japanese cultural norms and practices. Raised to be a leader skilled in statecraft and war, Shiro rose to power as the head of his family, then region of the planet. Eventually, having won over or defeated his other feudal warlords on New Samarkand, he laid out his plans for planetary rule. Shiro Kurita's ambition had no limit, and he soon turned his attention toward neighboring star systems with successful colonies. Through savvy subterfuge and military pressure, when needed, more settlements and planets fell under Shiro Kurita's banner. Each of them provided additional resources and soldiers to bolster Shiro's growing imperial ambition. In a letter by Shiro Kurita to his 14-year-old son Tenno, he wrote, Our forces have paid the price in blood, valor, and high honor to help me create a domain, a kingdom, a dynasty. I charge you, my son, with its protection after my death, on whatever day that may come. I am the coordinator of the Draconis Combine. My brother Urizen is the warlord, but you are its future, and your children and their children. Remember this. I have chosen the dragon as our standard and our symbol, reflecting many facets of our existence. We must never forget the ancient Terran heritage of our line, with its samurai greatness. I remind you, too, that in many mythologies the dragon is feared and respected for its strength, cunning, and willingness to destroy for the sake of its own power. Always keep the virtues of the dragon in mind, and use them to defeat your opponents. No single person, living or dead, is more responsible for what the Draconis Combine was and is at the dawn of the Ill Clan era than Shiro Kurita. Knowing this, granting a battle neck with the name Shiro is not an idle or flippant act. Rather, it's a very deliberate attempt to connect the destiny of the father of the Draconis Combine and the future of those who fight to keep every planet and citizen under their banner. The Shiro was first produced in 3135 and is a great example of an inner sphere house totem battle mech. Weighing 75 tons and brimming with the best technology possible, a single glance at the Shiro is enough to identify the allegiance of the warrior inside, with a notable exception that we'll cover in a bit. From proud stance to weaponry to armor, the Shiro is modeled to look like a samurai warrior from Old Terra. Being granted the right to use the Shiro as a mech warrior is considered a great honor and only the best and most decorated of the DCMS could ever hope to pilot it. In fact, when Taishu Toranaga first saw the Shiro, he immediately ordered that only the best of the Combine should be allowed to touch it. It was hoped that the Shiro would inspire the Combine and the DCMS soldiers that fought alongside it to embrace the spirit of Shiro Kurita and fight tenaciously. Constructed around a Luthien class 7477 endo steel frame, an extra light gyro, and a Ford 375XL engine, the Shiro is built to last. The mech's top speed is a decent 75 km per hour, only slightly hobbled by the 21 tons of hardened new Samarkand Tepeki armor. That's 168 armor points to spread around the mech, as hardened armor only provides 8 points of protection per ton. Now before you panic, each point of armor requires 2 points of damage to destroy it. To help sort that out, 
Any damage recorded on the record sheet should be done in hash marks rather than just bubbling in the armor points. A single hash for one point of damage and a second slash for the second point. Now while that might seem like a wash, each full point of armor only counts as a single point for the purposes of piloting skill damage rolls. That means you would need to do 40 damage instead of 20 to the mech in a single turn to force that piloting skill check. Through armor criticals, including floating critical hit rolls against the mech with hardened armor, suffer from a minus two modifier, making criticals more difficult to obtain. Hardened armor also negates the effect of armor penetrating ammunition and tandem charge munitions. The drawbacks of hardened armor are the weight, obviously, as well as the minus one to the running MP of a battle mech and a plus one to any piloting skill roll the mech warrior has to make due to the ungainly placement of the overlapping armor plates. Once you sit down and wrap your brain around the hardened armor rule, it's pretty easy to remember. Once you play a few times with the Shiro, it'll be second nature. Luthien Armor Works installed a Cypher Comsys 4 communication system along with an ECM suite to boost the Shiro's survivability. The Neko Megane 7 targeting and tracking system is solid without any reports of issues. The Shiro's unique loadout of four Shigunga Clan-type LRM-10 launchers split between the right and left torsos, an Imperator LB-2X autocannon in the left arm, and a sword in the right arm, makes for what would be a somewhat middling fire support mech at first glance. However, with no minimum range on the Clan LRM systems and that sword, the Shiro is able to threaten at close range as well. Though keep in mind that there are only three tons of ammunition available for the four LRM-10s, so those missiles could run out quicker than you think. The mech starts to make a little bit more sense when we recall that it was intended to be an inspiring command mech. Combine officers are expected to fight in the field alongside their soldiers. With the Shiro, you have a 75-ton mech that is very well armored, decently fast to keep up with shifting front lines, and can still offer fire support when needed. The ECM is just frosting on the cake for that leadership role. Deployment of the first production runs of the Shiro were slow, and this only intensified a growing mystique around the battle mech. DCMS officers saw it as the ultimate prize for notorious service and competed fiercely to be seen performing bravely in front of commanding officers. Sometimes it worked, and sometimes it got the officer killed in a foolhardy action. It was all rather clandestine as local warlords and top officers would write off an officer's chances of receiving a Shiro if they looked to be positioning themselves to earn one. So you had to want it, but not look like you wanted it. In August of 3144, the Draconis Combine descended upon Robinson, a provincial capital world of the Federated Sons Draconis March. Among those invading forces was Taisa Moishi Tolkowski, who was second in command of the 7th Sword of Light. Tolkowski and his unit found themselves fighting a defensive action against a counterattack by the 20th Avalon Hussars. Establishing a position on higher ground, the Combine Battlemax stubbornly defended it from multiple waves of the Hussars. The situation for Tarkowski and his fellow mech warriors looked dire as they were tired, low on ammunition, and relief was not coming. By this point, Tarkowski's Shiro was out of ammunition, so he fought with sword and foot. When his unit saw their commanding officer wading into the rushing mechs, they joined him and ended up breaking the Davion's charge. Even though the combined mechs were outnumbered, they ended up winning the day. When the 8th Sword of Light heard of this event, they granted Taisa Tokowski the honor of raising the Combine banner over the courtyard of the Sandoval family palace when the planet was secured and the last of the defenders were defeated. Being a relatively new battle mech, there aren't a long list of variants for the Shiro. However, there is a special best of the best upgrade called the Shiro SH-2P, which pulls the LB-2X in favor of a clan tech ERPPC and ballistic reinforced armor instead of the hardened technology. It also has 13 double heat sinks instead of the original's 10 to compensate for the particle projection cannon. If it was difficult for the DCMS officer to be assigned a standard model, the 2P version was near impossible. The Shiro is an interesting mech, and that LB2X is a giveaway that it was an idea generated during the hero clicks days of Battletech. While not pumping out massive amounts of damage, character and strength go a long way. It's a decently fast mech, can be a fair fire support unit, and in a clinch, that 9 damage from the sword can be fun. If I were to pick a variant, it would definitely be that 2P because of the ammo concerns for the LRM-10s. You do not want to have to rely solely upon an LB-2X and a sword for a long campaign or battle if your resupply is delayed. 
If the mech has any flaws, it's the ammunition issue, the LB2X being a thing, and the fact that it isn't already available in CGL plastic form and sitting on my shelf right now. Dang it. Oh, remember at the beginning of the video where I mentioned that this was an exclusive Combine battle mech with a notable exception? As it turns out, proximity to the Draconis Combine can have some upside potential. Shocking, right? In the rules annex of the Field Manual 3145, the roll table for the Raven Alliance mechs happens to have our friend the Shiro on it. Now it is curious that it is labeled an SH-1R rather than a 1V or 2P. Now as much as I poked around, I wasn't able to find a record sheet or anything in website databases for the SH-1R, which means it's either being really sneaky or it's a misprint. Until I find out otherwise, I'm going to err on the side of what's cool and assume that there's a Raven Alliance version of the Shiro with a really cool loadout, maybe even a plasma rifle in that left arm. Now we can't wrap this up without a Mac Frog variant, and this time I have something special cooked up. For the Shiro SHMF, we have started with the original 1V setup with the hardened armor. First things first, we ripped out the LB2X like it deserves, and in its place, we're going to give this mech a small size shield to go along with its sword. The shield can be used in a few different ways to mitigate incoming damage based upon how you plan on using your other weapons that turn. If you want to know more, check out the Tactical Operations book for the description, construction, and specific use rules. In addition to the shield, the MF Shiro has the fourth ton of LRM ammo to help alleviate the ammunition concerns, and if things get really heated, a pair of Clan Medium Pulse Lasers are sitting pretty in that left torso. I think this loadout builds on the aesthetic of the Shiro while also offering something new to play with. The Medium Pulse Lasers add some much needed punch without going all in on an ERPPC with the 2P variant. I suspect it would do very well. What do you think? Did you know about the Shiro? Have you used it in battle? Let me know how it went in the comments and we'll keep the conversation going. If there's a Dark Age or Ill Clan era mech you really want me to cover, let me know. Big thank you for watching, and if you think it was worthwhile, hitting all the buttons makes YouTube algorithm happy. Even joining the channel as a channel member is a great way to support the creation of future content. It's mostly painless. Mostly. Until we meet again, take care and go make the world a slightly better place today and tomorrow.